afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to this 29th Leadership Chairs Conversations organized by the Robin Kenneth Chair for Leadership at Christ University. Let's start this session with a moment of uh, silent prayer. Thank you. Respected Vice Chancellor, Honorary Colonel Dr. Father Abraham William, Pro Vice Chancellor Dr. Father Joe Sisi, Registrar Dr. Anil Joseph Pinto, Distinguished Guests from Delhi Dr. Rajesh Tandon, Dr. Nandida Bhatt, and Dr. Kaustav, Resource Person for the session Dr. Father Kurian Kachapalli, Deans, Directors, HODs, and other faculty colleagues. Welcome to the 29th edition of uh, Leadership Conversations, hosted by the Praveen Kenneth Chair on Leadership, Christ University. It is after a long gap that we are sitting side by side on an offline mode to attend this session, and it is indeed very refreshing. As you know, Today, the entire world is celebrating International Women's Day. As for me, this celebration is a sign of appreciation, respect, love, and care towards women in our lives and in society. It is time society and the world at large started noticing their absence and appreciating their presence because I, for one, believe that they can contribute equally to the home, society, and the nation. So let me take this opportunity to wish all the women leaders seated here in this room and also those attending this session virtually a very happy Women's Day. Let's put our hands together and give them a huge applause. Yes. Now let me get into the task of uh, moderating the 29th Leadership Conversation session. The resource person for today is very much known to all of us, or most of us assembled in this room here and those attending online. He is Dr. Father Kurian Kachapille, CMI. Let me give a very brief profile of Father Kurian Kachapille, who is also a very good friend of mine. Professor Dr. Kurian Kachapille, CMI, philosopher, psychologist, and author. Dr. Kurian Kachapilli is a professor of philosophy and religion at the DVK Bangalore, Christ University Bangalore, and a visiting faculty at the University of Bangalore, NIAS Bangalore, KU Leuven, Leuven, Belgium, FHWS, Wurzburg, Germany, Latrobe, Melbourne, Australia, and Santo Thomas, the Philippines. He holds a master's degree in English Literature, MLIT, and another in psychology, and a licentiate and doctorate in philosophy from KU University, KU Leuven, Belgium. He has been a first rank holder and topper throughout his studies. Dr. Kachapile is a prolific writer with 16 books and many scientific articles to his credit. His book, God of Love and Between Partners, are well known in the field of philosophy psychology, both among his friends and critics. He has traveled more than 75 countries for colloquium, conferences, and seminars at universities, institutes, etc. Besides over 25 years of teaching experience, he is a TEDx speaker and a well-known organizer of international conferences like Process Religion Society in 2009, Mysticism Without Bounds 2011, Bounds of Ethics in a Globalized World 2014, in which His Holiness Dalai Lama was the chief guest. Harmony in the Face of Cosmic, Ethical, and Religious Orders 2019. At present, Father Kachapilli is the President of DVK Bangalore and Executive Director of the International Process Network. At a personal level, Father Kachapilli has been my teacher, and I had the privilege of interacting with the Father Kurian 
over during the time of all these four conferences, international conferences that he organized at Christ University. Even before joining Christ, I had known Father Kudin Kachapalli because he hails from my neighboring village back in Kerala. Just five minutes drive from my ancestral house, I am entering his village or I can enter his village. In fact, his village, for your information, is known for two famous things. One, of course, for Father Kudin Kachapalli, the village really literally owns it. When I go there, I say, oh, our father, Kudian Kachapalli. They call him as our father. Of course, not the father in heaven, but our father, Kudian Kachapalli. And the second reason, which I am sure more, none of you would know, this place is called Malusheri. It's famous for a breed of mango, mango tree. And it's named after the village. It's called Malusheri Mango. And it's very famous in central Kerala, in our villages. And so on. the beauty of this tree is that it gives you fruit throughout the year. 365 days of the year, you get mango fruit from that particular tree. So I'm reminded, when I think of that tree, I'm also reminded about Father Kudin Kachapalli. Like the tree, he also is the delivering or act, I mean, active 365 days of the year, taking care of his pastoral duties, responsibilities as a president of DVK, as a researcher who travels extensively, attending and organizing conferences. Today, he is going to talk to us about a leader, a fellow sufferer who understands. In fact, when I read this heading, I, rem I mean, I remember of an article that I read, the summer substance of it said, keep company with your leaders, because on top they, they're lon they are lonely and suffering. And I'm sure at the end of this session, Father Quirin will be able to throw some light upon this particular issue. So let's put our hands together to welcome this extraordinary resource person, Dr. Father Kudin Kachapalli. Just two reminders, today's session, as you all know, will be divided into two parts. First part, Father Kudin Kachapalli will be addressing for about 20, 25 minutes, followed by the discussion, then maybe some announcements by the registrar and the concluding remarks by Father Vice Chancellor, after which we have the three resource person, eminent personalities from Delhi, who will be addressing us for five minutes each, which will be taken care of by Dr. Teresa Nadella Vincent, who will be moderating it. So over to you, Father Kudin. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Tommy. I feel humbled to address such an elite group of Christ University. Of course, I have been part of it, and I'm still, I think. Yes, Honorable Vice Chancellor Father Abraham, uh, Pro Vice Chancellor Father Jose, I don't know he's around, uh, Dr. Anil, uh, Registrar. Uh, if I say props and docs and the the deans and the HRDs, so cordial welcome. Let me invite you for a while to the world of philosophy. Because my prime statement is this, we all are philosophers. And I am doubly honored by the presence of our esteemed guest from Delhi, am I right? So thank you to our Dr. Tommy for the words of introduction. Uh, our Dr. Samuel, for the kind, okay. So let's come to, so this is the session which we need not discuss about. This is my take on who a leader is. I know we have different concepts, definitions, interpretations of leader and leadership. And maybe every one of us holds a view about leader and leadership. So my stand is this. And I have taken this statement from the well-known mathematician Alfred North Whitehead. That's my field of specialization. He wrote that famous book along with his student, Bertrand Russell, Principia Mathematica. And later from Cambridge, he moved to Harvard, where he was the chair of the Faculty of Philosophy. Those days, he wrote his what they call Opus Manus, the great work, Process and Reality. And that book concludes with this quotation. Last but a few lines, then you see this. Reference is to God. God is a great companion, the philosopher who understands. Now I have slightly changed that God concept to a leader concept. 
those who believe they say God is the leader of par excellence. There's no doubt about that. Okay, now three key words. One is companion, companion from the Latin word, companis. What is panis? I know you know maths and chemistry and physics and management and engineering, not Latin and Greek and Hebrew, I know. Uh, no, panis is bread. So bread, bread, roti. So when you eat with, they are the real companions. When you dine with. So companion, that's a key word there. Secondly, sufferer. Now, sufferer, not suffering. The original Greek word, pathos. What is pathos? Sympathos, apathos, empathos. To feel. That is the first meaning of uh, pathos. Later, we have pati as suffering. Otherwise, it's a feeling. And third word, understanding. We all say, I understand. In the classroom, many a time we ask, do you understand? And students will say, okay, they shake their head. And the foreigners are confused about the Indian shaking your head. This way or that way. They said, wait a minute, what are you talking about? You see? I said, this is a citation from Whitehead. I tried to be like Whitehead, but unfortunately I failed in making my head. So I thought at least something should be white. Therefore, I changed my beard into white. So I am white beard, not white head. OK, let's come. This is the world we are living in. Everybody would say, I'm a king. You know the story, the frog in the well? He swam around, saw no other frogs, and thought, oh, I am the prince. I am the prince. We all are princes. We all are kings. Not only that. Dr. Tommy spoke about kingdom. Now here we are making my kingdom. Instead of praying, thy kingdom come, we are praying, let my kingdom come. We all have our own kingdoms. Think about that. Do you agree? Yes? Now, what happens in that kingdom? This is the dynamics going on in that kingdom. This is from the famous French philosopher Paul Sartre. If you want to say in English, Paul Sartre, in French, Paul Sartre. Now, what is the dynamics going on? Paul Sartre would say, I am making my own kingdom. And in that process, I am trying to convert everybody into things, objects. And what is the very meaning of object? Anybody? Yeah, to be used. But real meaning of object? Maybe I should, I should ask uh, Dr. Tommy, please come. This is a demonstration is the best way of teaching. Trying to make me walk. Yeah, can you walk? Walk? No, no, walk. Walk with here. Yes. There's an object here. Yes. Yeah. What which objects is an object? What's that? What's it? That which objects you is an object. Okay. That can be a thing. That can be even a person. So what are we doing? I am trying to conquer over everybody into that kind of objects. Now, just imagine, I am making my own world, and in that process, Kennedy sir is there, and everybody, one after another, Jane and Tommy and others, all coming. And what others are doing? They are also making their own world. That's why you see there are two circles. I make my own world. I try to encompass all what is there. The other is also trying to encompass whatever is. Now the only question is who succeeds first. If you are very smart, very intelligent, very powerful, very capable of, then perhaps you succeed. And you become the winner. I am the, the loser. It can be other way out. So this is the world we live in today. Now, what are the causes for this hardcore competition? hardcore conflict, winning over. Now, Thomas Hobbes, in his famous book, Leviathan, I'm sure those who are interested in literature might be remembering that, Leviathan, the famous text. There he speaks about three important causes of this conflict between a person and the other person. Number one, competition. Number two, diffidence. Number three, glory. Now, what is number one competition? 
Why do we compete? Why do you why each other? Hobbes would say, we have an understanding that we all are equal. If you are equal, if you can do, she can do, I can also do it. You know the difference between the Indian mindset and Japanese, which is very popular? Yes? Japanese would say, if she can, he can, definitely I can. Indians would say, if she can, he can, let them. And second, Japanese would say, if she can't and he can't, I must. Indian would say, if she can't, he can't, how can I? Now here the question is, the understanding that we are all equals. But I would say Thomas Hobbes is wrong there. It's only a myth. What is equality? Especially today, we are, we are talking about, yes, I have high appreciation to all the women. Happy Women's Day. And that the theme proposed by UNESCO, you know, is gender. Gender equality today for bright future of tomorrow. That's the theme. So my question is, of course, they speak about gender, not sex. Because psychologists and biologists, they make a distinction between sex, therefore male and female, and gender, masculine and feminine. This all, that's hair splitting distinction. Forget about that. Now, where is equality? Tell me. Show me two people who are equal. Do you find anywhere? I have never seen. I've been here around 34 years in this campus. You see? Therefore, when we say equal, so much so there is a competition. No, there is no e equality. There is something called what Plotinus say, there's a great chain of beings. What is the meaning of great chain of being? There are gradations. That's why we give greater distinction, distinction, first class, second class. That's explicit. Proof that there are, there are grades. That's where today universities are trying to do it with the gradations. Otherwise, also we say A yeah, plus, A. Yeah. Now, Christ is struggling to get a A plus plus in the next accreditation. Again, grading. So, if that is true, where is equality? And in logic, there is a principle. I don't know, principle of at least fathers who study Justin and Benny, they might be remembering the principle of identity. A is identical with, identical with, that's also in mathematics and in, and in algebra. A is equal to only A. It can never be equal to B or C. If that is true, there is no point in talking about equality, therefore competition. That's a fact, we could not have time otherwise. Now, the second is diffidence. What is the difference according to him? Given this context of conflict between person and person, we lose our trust in the other. We become enemies. He would say that would lead to war. Today, what is happening between Russia and Ukraine? And some of my best friends are in Ukraine. Even today, I call one of them. They said, university, they have not attacked it because he's in Kyiv. He came for the conference last uh, 2019 for the Harmony conference. Now, only this Harmony, no Harmony. You see, therefore, the question is diffidence. I don't trust you, you don't trust me. So much so, we don't meet face to face. But again, I would say Hobbes is wrong. You see, in English literature, we use two words. One is mistrust, not a mistress. Mistress is also a sign of mistrust. Forget about that. So mistrust and distrust. Maybe can you can explain the nuances and implications of that. Now, here, lack of trust, let's say in general meaning, lack of trust. I would say Hobbes is wrong. We have at least something called basic trust. I am going to prove that because philosophy, philosophy need arguments. Yes, do you travel sometimes by public transportation? Yes, bus, car, flight. Before traveling, do you ever ask the pilot or the captain, are you going to kill me on the way? No. Why? You trust. So we all have that basic trust. Otherwise, you would have always asked, what will be my end, my destiny? No, we don't ask. Yes, some crazy people do ask. 
although there are accidents. I am part there of your accidents. section, sir. Yes. Please. Somebody there? Yeah, yes, please. Okay. So that's one example. Second, more conspicuous. Do you take food and drinks from shops? How many of us would have a test before we take it? We don't go to any lab. Yeah, but that's not practical. Now, excuse me if I say an extreme example. How many of us called a papa, papa after having a DNA test? I don't think anybody would have done that. But still, mama said, this is your papa. Okay, papa, dad, whatever you call, appa. So that means in all of us, there is something called a basic trust, which we can't deny. So therefore, we are not aliens, as if I don't care. No. Now, third, glory. Okay. This is the third cause for this conflict. Now, what is glory? The stand I take, I am better than others. And this is part and parcel of our very ego. I do believe I am better and I am the boss. I am more dominant than you people. And that's our take. And we say that is true. But my problem with Thomas Hobbes is this. How can we compare two people and say I am greater than the other? You know what is the meaning of comparison? Compare in Latin. Pair with. Yeah, we are examples of pair. We go, don't go to the uh, shop and ask one pant. We ask pants. Why? It's a pair. We go to a shop and we don't say, give me one glass. No, we say Google or glasses. Why? They all pair. But how do you pair two people? On what ground? What are the criteria for comparison? There is no comparison whatsoever. Even if what we call identical twins, in fact, they are not identical twins. CMI congregation is famous and notorious with six pairs or six identical twins. And we know them quite well. Although apparently they look similar, they are not the same. Therefore, there is no comparison whatever possible. So these three causes of the so-called conflict, number one, competition on the presumption that we are equals. Number two, difference, that we don't trust each other. And third one, glory, because I am greater than you. Given this context, this is the sixth and eleventh, the living context of leadership. Now, you might have heard so many paradigms of leadership. I don't enter into that. There may be a visionary paradigm, administrative paradigm. This is more biblical, shepherding. I think Father uh, Rector might have spoke about shepherding. I don't know, last time. Or you can speak about missionary or whatever. You can speak about, let's say, a university leadership. Or... But what would be the leadership? My concern is this. Leadership to be a successful, you need two rules, which I call golden rules. Don't get confused. They look similar. They are not the same. What is the first rule? It's not about you and second rule is only about you this is my plea don't get confused these are the golden rules of authentic leadership whatever nomenclature you may give what is the first one it is not this sometimes traditionally they call it servant leadership now what is it i have taken a text from chichero the famous author the republic of chichero he says, what is the seven leadership? It means two things. Number one, don't do any harm on others. And second, do only what is good for the common good. I don't know, in English dictionary, you have read what is the definition of a gentleman, gentlewoman? Anybody? Maybe that's a problem, or problem that's a privilege with the senior professors. They don't need a dictionary. But in that dictionary, it's given a gentleman is one who inflicts no harm on others. Now, here the first part is no harm on others. This is what years ago, uh, is that a Chinese man? 
I forgot the name. Confucius said in the negative, don't do unto others what you don't want others to do for you. Which Jesus made in the positive in the Sermon on the Mount, do to others what you want others to do for you. So this is the first thing. Now, what we call the natural law is based on this. What is natural law? Which is the foundation of moral law, ethical law. Two principles. Do good and avoid evil. Do good and avoid. Now, a servant leadership or it's not all about you means first thing I don't do any harm whatsoever to others. That should be my first buff, my resolve, my decision. And secondly, others' interest, not my interest. Now, in the academic circle, maybe dean or HOD or head of the department, whatever. You see, think first. If I am a HOD, if I'm a dean, I will not bring any harm to entire team of the faculty and students. Secondly, I will promote the best I can their interest. This is the first. And the best example I found in the Bible is this. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. This is a citation from Pope, Pope Francis has become very popular today. Even our Honorable Prime Minister, when he went to Rome, he made a point to visit. And I have some lovely pictures and videos of the meeting between Pope Francis and, and our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi. I don't know whether you have seen that. If you want to see, visit my um, Facebook. I have put at least five, six photos. Very touching, powerful photos. So he says, there is only one road in leadership that is service, nothing else. Now, the second is, is all about you. What is this all about to you? If you are a leader, and if an authentic leader, don't wait for others' actions. First, you initiate yours. You see, initiation, the first word should be yours. The first step. Then others will follow. If you are authentic, if you are true to yourself, if you have other centered, or what do you mean? You don't aim any harm but you care for the interest of others. So this is it's all about you. I don't know if you heard about this famous saying in Latin, because most of the words are also in English. Verba movent, exambla trahun. Words move, but examples transform. Remember Mark Cannon's speech, friends, Romans, countrymen, I have come not to praise Caesar, but to bury him. And that moves the entire people against Brutus. The same people after some time moved against Mark Antony, you know the history of the, the, the novels. So now powerful orators, they can move people. And that is especially true with the politicians. They can, they can passionately move the hearts and minds of the people, but that will be short-lived. But what about examples? Even Gandhi is now the most popular in the virtual world. Why? Not because he was an orator, but his life moved others. That's why he said, words can move, but life can change, transform. So many examples, like Therese of, my Therese of Calcutta. She's a very good offer. I know her from the age of 14 until she died. I have been with her so many times, even in Bangalore, in Lufine, in Calcutta, because Sharir also in Calcutta and Ranchi, so that's the difference. Yeah. So therefore, now just two citations: one from Gandhi and one from Gandhi's follower, that is Nelson Mandela. You see, they say, "You be the change, what you want." And Nelson Mandela sadly said, "I couldn't change others until I change myself." This is all about the second golden rule of leadership. It's all about you. Are you willing to take a step? If not, forget about leadership. Don't be a dean. 
Don't be an HOD. Don't be a head of the department or a section. Don't be even a class bill. Because that serves no purpose. Now, this authentic leadership calls for three important features. This I have taken from the famous philosopher Martin Heidegger, who has influenced scientists, theologians, philosophers, psychologists. Martin Heidegger. This is all from his famous book, Being and Time, Sein und Zeit, Being and Time. Now, three important. Number one, understanding. You see, the very definition is a fellow sufferer who understands. Now, what is understanding? Sometimes we say, oh, I understand. Is it understanding? When we say understand, do we really understand? Our understanding is, I have a, I have a collection of vocabularies and I put on somebody else and I say, oh, now I understand. That is not understanding, that is imposing your vocabulary. And if you are a very good man in literature, in English especially, you have a lot of vocabulary. And if you are teaching chemistry or physics, maybe less vocabulary. But that is not understanding. Understanding is, go, oh, sorry. Understanding is, let other be disclosed. That's why it is said, standing under. What is standing under? You let the other speak. You let the other live. You let the other act. And you wait in patience, in humility. Then you can say, oh, this is really understanding. That's why understanding should become standing under. You let other think, feel, say, act. And Heidegger uses the word verstehen, not understanding. Because understanding, if you say understand in German, is understand, standing under. But he uses the word verstehen. Are there German scholars? And verstehen, fair is a prefix. And does not mean under. It means to the end. According to his commentator, especially John Macquarie, who translated the famous book, he said, first gen means being transparent. Transparency is understanding. You know what is the quality of transparency? Because this wall, it is opaque. Therefore, we can't see through. And we don't know what is happening there. But if it is transparent, that's why one of the teachers, when I was in the high school, said two things. Don't put colored spectacles. Secondly, don't create iron curtains. Both are dangerous. What happens with iron curtains? You see nothing ahead. And what happens when it is colored spectacles? Suppose I put on a green glass, I see only green. What about white, yellow, the lovely saris of the lovely ladies? I don't see. It's all white, white. So therefore, understanding is transparency. So that must be the first quality of a successful, authentic leader. Number two, understanding takes us to interpretation. Now, interpretation has different meanings in Heidegger. I'm going to take only one. Interpretation means the self-realization. And split that word realization into three. Real I session. What does it mean? A process of finding or discovering the true I. That is the meaning of realization. Sometimes we say Sachatkara in Sanskrit. The true. Now, what is this? That realization must take place at two levels. One is internal, one is external. Internal, we call it Ad Intra. Can you remember a little bit of Latin words? Ad intra, the other is ad, but could be opposite of intra, extra, internal, external. That's the same English word, it's from Latin. Now, what is internal realization? That there is a lovely blending of my faculties. What are the major human faculties, by the way? We call it cognitive, cognitive, and affective. 
the thinking faculty, the willing faculty, and the feeling faculty. That's why we have three margas. Jnana marga, Akti marga, Karma marga. That's why we have three religious vows. Chastity, poverty, obedience. So all depends on our human faculties. So if there is a blending, if there is a samanvayam, if there is an integration of these three faculties, that is the Adi Indra realization. Now what is Adi Extra? That is, I. You know, people may be tired of listening to this all philosophic expression. Now, when do I say I am Korean? Or when do you say you are so-and-so? When others are there. Suppose you are all alone, and if you say I am Korean, Korean, and somebody overhears, I will end up in new hands. Do you agree? So I say I am Korean only in the presence of others. In other words, I become aware of myself in the presence of the other. You call it brother, sister, or whatever. Maybe your siblings, maybe your papa, your mama. But we need some presence. That's why the self sells in the other. That's a text from Desmond, William Desmond, an Irish philosopher. The self sells in the other. So we need the other. Now, what about I and the other? We are in this nature. And this nature and the other and I in the very belly of the divine. I don't say oh, Jesus or anything, the divine. You see, so I, you can say the first circle, I, second circle, the other, third circle, the nature, and the fourth circle is the divine. This is one of the definition of life accepted by the Cambridge University when they asked to write me a competition. And they accepted that. They gave me six months to write one sentence. The question was, how do you define your life? And I took six months thought and thought, consulted with my professors, teachers, and finally I came up with this. Life is a network of relationships, and I borrowed an expression from Carl Jung, psychology, that is a marriage quaternio. What is marriage quaternio? Marriage is union, quaternio four, a union of four. What is that for? The self, the other, the nature, and God. I use the word God because I'm a priest. And Cambridge accepted that. See? So that's what we are talking about. So realization are the indra, are the extra. Now finally, this is something. The third one is discourse. What is discourse? Heidegger would say intelligible articulation. And I didn't speak about the opposites. What could be the opposite of discourse for Heidegger? Pratil. That's the word he uses. It's not a common word. What is pratil? Pratil in ordinary language means gossips, loose talk. And loose talk is very detrimental, like backbiting, calumny, etc., etc. But here he says, discourse. Discourse is an intelligible articulation of words that are life giving. You see, Heidegger, no, Heidegger is taking the root of the word in Hebrew, ruach. What is ruach in Hebrew? Breath. And breath is a sign of? life. Therefore, he would say, if at all you utter a word, it should be life-giving. And give example, the Adi Shabta, Om, that's life-giving. You see, St. John Gospel, in the beginning was NRK Logos, in the beginning was the word, and word was with God, and word is God. That's what we are talking about. So when we use our words, are they life-giving? Otherwise, you would say, keep quiet. An authentic leader should be doubly careful when you utter a word. If they are not life-giving, if they are not enhancing the quality of life, better don't talk. In German, there is a beautiful saying. Since you don't know German, I will, I will switch over to English. Uh, think twice before you speak. Think three times before you act. Think four times before you go to ocean sea. Think five times before you get married. 
Denken Sie mit der zweimal, bevor Sie etwas sprechen. Denken Sie mit der dreimal, bevor Sie etwas tun. Denken Sie mit der vier, viermal, bevor Sie se, äh, gehen möchten. Und denken Sie mit der fünfmal, bevor Sie heiraten wollen. You see? And leaders should be doubly careful before you speak out. Because ask this question, is it breath? Is it life-giving? These are some of the concluding remarks. One is from Pope, and secondly, this one, you see? Because he can connect, and therefore he understand. And finally, now, I will conclude with a very famous poster. It's not mine. I have taken from the, the media. I don't know, you have seen this? A leader should engage in a badminton match. And here, you see? If you want to be a winner, serve well. Service is very important. Not only really serving well, then return well. And play calm and cool. And above all, don't forget, the game starts with love all. So if you want to be a successful leader, start with love all. Then everything will be on track. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, thank you very much, Father, for that uh, inspiring session. I'm sure if allowed, he would have continued for hours and hours of this uh, philosophical discourse. And I have heard people say, uh, I think some of Father's colleagues only say, that if you search on Google for the top philosophers in the world, Father Kujian's name would be listed in f among the thousand, the first thousand, I think so, or maybe even first hundred. Having listened to him now, I think none of us have doubt about that. Okay. So on that note, we will uh, take some couple of questions. Maybe first we will take questions from uh, online listeners. Anybody from uh, the other campuses? Father, please sit down. Any questions from the other campuses? You can please unmute and ask. Or by the time you prepare, maybe anybody from the audience here, yeah? any questions? OK, by the time they think, Father, maybe I will have a question for you. Uh, you know, in ethics, we talk about the utilitarian principle. Now, keeping that in mind, can for the larger good of the larger number or the larger population, can a small harm be done to a smaller group or an, to an individual? What's your take on that? Yeah, uh, the problem with the utilitarian theory as proposed by Jeremy Bentham and later by William James and others, uh, of course, it has its own plus points, negative points, but uh, as a person of ethics, uh, nobody would advocate that. Because the problem, utility, what William James finally coined, the cash value. Now, what is the cash value of a person? How do you measure that? You see, now, utilitarian theory, the, what do you, I hope you know the central tenets of that theory. The highest good of the highest majority of the field. Now, who decides what is good for the majority? A handful of people. Now, who decides? What is good for Russia, Putin? That's the one danger with the utilitarian theory. Secondly, it promotes that old culture of use and throw. So long as you are useful, okay, the moment you are no more useful, try to repair. It's like a, what we call this vending machines. So long as it works, okay. If it doesn't work, throw it away. And that's why Immanuel Kant, in his critique, said a person can never be a means, but only an end. We can't use and throw people, although that's happening in the society. Those who are powerful, they just use, and once the, the, the use is over, just. So therefore, that theory is a bit dangerous. OK, Father. Maybe I'll extend a question later, if uh, no other question comes. Yes, Nidalem, ma'am, yes. I'm curious to know how many languages you know. Oh, my God. <laughs> to be frank, I know uh, English. I can speak Hindi quite well, Malayalam. I can speak German quite well. A uh, little bit of Dutch I can speak, a little bit of French I can speak. Then Poquito Espanol. Yes. Then, yes, Canada I understand, Tamil. Yeah, but I can, Sanskrit, Sanskrit I can read and write because I know Hindi, also I study Sanskrit. Greek I can read and write. And uh, Latin I can read very well and write very well. Hebrew, very, very little. Because I forgot Hebrew and Syriac. 
to be, I should confess. Yes. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, I think for, uh, Dr. Anil Pindu has a question. Uh, I am administrator. So, <laughs> uh, so, no, one thing is, see, we, uh, of course, uh, there's a context which will take a question he asked, but see, for example, I've called all the teachers back, I've called the students back. And there was resistance. Some said, I mean, not large resistance, there was no protest, but I'm sure many would have said, you know, don't call us back, pandemic is not over yet, don't you worry, right? So administrator constantly, I have to take those decisions, which means from their point of view, it is pain. Their point of view for them, look, it doesn't make sense to me to travel. Uh, for example, we call them in January, thinking pandemic is getting over, then they, we have to close in four days. Now, then they said, look, I have to spend so much on the flights, that, this, you know, why do you want to make suffer like that? But as administrator, that is all the data I have. I have what, I have what is called the greater good of the, uh, greater common good in my head. But the point is that that does not eliminate people from suffering or me causing suffering to others. Same thing with the words, right? I will tell somebody you're transferred to the campus. Of course, these are words that will hurt. Right? But the point is that I will have to do it in the interest of the institution. So what you said holds good I mean, for me in the sense that when I put myself in the context, constantly I find the, myself in contradicting what you said. Thank you. Um, thank you. In which I asked that yes, question thank you. I am also in the same shoes as you are. <laughs> I am also the head of the institution. So we had a lot of trouble. Now, uh, the answer is very simple. Uh, this is the question of addressing what is freedom. I don't know, you have definition of being with the background of literature, Crossing the Road by A.G. Garden. The story takes place in Picarly Street. Apparently, sorry to use that word because the text is like, it. apparently very fat lady is running through the street. The policeman there stops her and says, ma'am, you can't do that. Then he said, she said, do you know who I am? I am the free citizen of the British Empire. Those days, British Empire was the empire. Then the policeman replied, ma'am, oh, I didn't know that you are the free citizen of the British Empire. Do you see all those cars and flying on the street? They are also free citizens of the British Empire. Now, if they use their freedom along with your freedom, what will be your end? You see, that is the limitation of freedom. Freedom is not what you like to do. Freedom, now, slowly he comes, freedom is a kind of contract which later developed by Rousseau and others. Now, uh, now, when there is a freedom, especially if you read Sartre, Sartre speaks about different grades of freedom. First is the fundamental option. Now, by the day they decide to be enrolled in Christ University, they have exercised their freedom. Okay? By the time they join DVK, they have exercised their basic freedom. Now, all the subsequent acts of freedom should be in tune to the first freedom. Otherwise, there is another option. You can retreat. You can quit. That's also freedom. So therefore, to your question, if students are really not willing, they should not have opted for this university. Because before joining, there is all they should know a little bit of what it is all about. Yeah, here, there is no contradiction in that. So then authentic leader will see what is the living context. That's the first thing. To, be, to put yourself in the shoes of the others. That is the first rule, not for you, but for others. Then you think from their perspective, then you get a better insight. And that will not be too much resistant. Anyway, Father, I think we are running short of time. Any one more last chance for the people attending online? Any questions from those attending online? Sir, may I? Yeah, yes, sir. That's uh, good, sir. sir. Yeah, one final yeah. question. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. The sir was talking about equality. He was telling two things cannot be equal, or rather two people cannot be equal. Yes. If they are equal, which is most wonderful, should people be different or they should be equal, which is most wonderful thing? Uh, if all are equal, it will be too boring. I would go for variety, <laughs> diversity, and differences. And then if you can celebrate that, that's much, much better than uh, making the same shoes for everybody which will be a practically impossible thing, because nature is not that. And if, like two, that if two become equal, is it that I uh, am Brahmasmi that I become God? Uh, no, <laughs> oh, may not be. That's all, yes, there is a concept like that. Uh, even in Plato is there, in Indian concept there is the Arthanashi is there, because they are split and therefore they are craving for each other, etc. This is all different philosophical perspective. But what we see across,
And what we see around is not equality, but difference. I think we should learn to celebrate that difference. Look at this, this elite group of processes. How many of you are to the equal? I don't see anybody. So common man can become common man, philosopher can be philosopher. Uh, no, common, can, common man can make himself a philosopher. Philosopher is basically uh, applied to everybody. Because the very fact you use your intellect, you are a philosopher. Because okay. philosophia, that is the root of philosopher, lovers of wisdom. Don't you have wisdom in everyday life? Surely. When an ordinary child uh, takes care when he, when he is so walking, that's okay. all wisdom, that's all philosophy. Therefore, there is no branded philosopher. Yes, we call some people because of their too much of writings, like Plato, the patriarchs, uh, Socrates, Aristotle, and Plato. And some. Otherwise, sir, I think you are a philosopher, I am a philosopher. Uh, maybe you take a hold, a different view, I take a different view. And if you can somehow uh, find a common line, that is what we call peace, tranquility. Yes, Father. Uh, yeah, thank you. That's what we'll carry home today, that we are all philosophers. Thank you, Father, for enlightening us on that. The fact that we are all philosophers, because we are all intellectuals. Uh, what happened to 7-3 yesterday? Before, before we conclude this session, I invite our beloved Vice Chancellor, Father Abraham, if he has any, 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 deliberate, any, any thoughts, final thoughts on the deliberations that we had. Father Vice Chancellor, are you there? Yeah, I think. Father uh, Korean is uh, uh, my just senior and uh, he's a good philosopher, good teacher, and he has given a very good articulation about the leadership. The process of conflicts, I like that point. A competition, difference, glory. I wonder, every leader has a fighting spirit to establish himself. For example, Putin is doing that, even though Russia is rich and uh, famous, they are invading a small nation. Like that, uh, any leader, when they uh, try to establish, they fight each other, or they find strength in fighting, and uh, deriving strength from fighting. I have seen uh, a, a new uh, newly coming uh, some uh, leaders, first of all, they just crush down everybody and they try to establish that is Kurin uh, has uh, very, uh, very uh, well articulated that point, okay? And uh, difference, mutual mistrust in the beginning, then they establish and glory comes. But uh, finally, uh, finally, he established the authentic leadership is understanding, interpretation, and discourse. That is wonderful. Discourse means uh, uh, the power of words. Uh, the life-giving words, uh, that means uh, we, uh, when we get to trust, uh, life, optimism, everything, when we listen to somebody, uh, that's a really wise man, a good leader. So, a uh, very, very nice articulation, Gurian. Thank you so much for your um, philosophical discourse in this regard. Thank you, Gurian. Thank you, Father, for those concluding remarks. Uh, may I now invite our registrar to make a few announcements. Now, as we come to the end of the session, I take this uh, opportunity to thank our beloved Vice Chancellor, Father Abraham William, for gracing the occasion. I express our gratitude and appreciation to the resource person, Dr. Father Kurian Kachapalli, our registrar, Dr. Anil Joseph Pinto, and all the academic leaders present both offline and online. I also thank Dr. Tony Sam George and uh, Mr. Samuel George from the leadership chair and the IT team for giving all this uh, support and making this interaction possible. Thank you one and all.